Welcome to the Ambassador's Hour and Chronicles of the Curvaceous. Tis I, your girl, Minister Asia, aka the Plus Size Queen. Today is Vado Day number 26, Motivational Monday on Chronicles. And girl, honey, we're just back to the Ambassador's Hour. So why haven't you already clicked subscribe? Like, share, comment, and subscribe. The Ambassador's Hour is a subsidiary of Loving People by Sharon Christ. Loving People by Sharon Christ is a Christian support page found on Facebook. It was founded by none other than Minister Renata C. McFadden and her bestie Heather. There you can find memes, gifts, and other graphical illustrations and depictions of the undying love of Jesus Christ. You can inbox your prayer requests. You can tell them your testimonies. And you can also read the daily devotionals because they're God breathed. But I'm back. I don't know who that imposter was walking around here with that botched up quick weave getting chased by the paparazzi saying she was Asia Paris, the plus size queen. But huh, on my $20 budget, I have sold my brains in. Yay! Okay, I'm rushing and I had to do a mashup car vlog because I am rushing. I'm going to be a little bit late. I'm going to text and let her know because I'm not going to rush God just because I'm running late and I don't have no appointments today so hey I'm going to do my best yes so y'all are getting ready with me and we're going to do a recap of the weekend and we're going to get our motivation on and all that good stuff y'all ready let's go ahead and say our mantra for I know who I am in whom that I stand, whom empowers me to be. I am an ambassador for Christ, and this is the hour to recognize me. So I brought the curvy queens and kings and gents back another week in a row. And no, I don't have on the same shirt. This is a purple um shirt that buttons down the back. The other was a you know cold shoulder top. So let's get that straight. I don't have to repeat. God has blessed me. Yes, thank you, Jesus. But um, I brought you guys back again so y'all can get motivated and I can save time instead of having to do two vlogs and I can let you guys know what's up. I'm sweating because I've been walking this morning. I was walking and the Lord began to reveal a revelation to me. I was getting tired as I walked up the hill. My back started to hurt a little bit and I just kept on going, kept on pressing. And I was like, oh my God. And he says, just turn around. And I turned around and I started walking backwards. And when I turned around, I was able to like basically turn, focus on him. And then I could see absolutely all the distance I had come. I had come up the hill and around the corner and down. And I had been, before I knew it, I was 0.96 miles, 2,000 and something steps away from where I began. So sometimes when you are focusing on getting those goals you don't have time to relish and um celebrate in the fact of how far you have become i was sitting here thinking you know my subscriber growth is not where I, let's stop crying at least you're crying before you um put your makeup on i was thinking my subscriber growth ain't where i want it to be and um i was binge watching chronicles and i'm doing a purple lip today to go a purple shirt and the purple nails I did this weekend trying to switch it up a little bit you know switch my hair and my look up a little bit just a little bit but anyway so um like I was saying sometimes you don't relish and you don't get a chance to really acknowledge and or celebrate the growth that you have as an individual, the growth we have as a channel. I remember when I didn't even know how to edit and I used to have to leave all kind of crap in there, not just because I chose to like I do now, but because I didn't have the wisdom or the know-how how to edit stuff. You know what I'm saying? And I cried about that and the Lord taught me how to edit. I didn't have a right camera. He gave me this one, even though it's broken now. That's why it's a little hazy always. Because I think I got a little piece of tape over the lens. <laughs> but uh, I digress. Anyway, and um, I'm being faithful over the few things because he's making me a ruler over much. So this weekend, last night to be exact, I woke up at 1.38. 
a.m. and I could not fall back to sleep. I, I have briefly been back to sleep, but I couldn't really fall back to sleep. And it was because of the fact that I was binge watching Chronicles. And a video came up from three years ago. I want to say, yeah, it was three years ago. And the video was entitled, Get Back Up Again. And in the video, I was just starting Chronicles of the Curvaceous. And um, I was talking, I was reading a journal entry that I had entitled Chronicles of the Curvaceous. Because I was just chronicling my curvy journey in 2014. And I was talking about getting back up again and how I had um, trusted God to get me back up again. Because you know how a sinner... He falls seven times, but he, the righteous man, he gets back up again. And so I was just telling God that I had to begin again. And I was excited because I wouldn't, I mean, I'm excited now, but in the video, I wasn't too excited because I was 261 pounds at the time and I was a size 16. And I was like, I couldn't even celebrate myself because of the mindset that I was in at that time, I couldn't even let myself be happy for the success. When I started the journey, initially I was 280 and I was at my point of, girl, what you doing? You know what I'm saying? And so I got up and I got a gym membership with my sister. She was ready to start her journey and we got up and we went to the gym and I lost some weight and I got down to like a 14 from a 22, okay? from April to like June and then here it was July I was gaining weight because I was in a bad relationship and I was telling you guys then on the video get back up again that he was incarcerated and it gave me a chance to get my mind right and get back in the gym you know and just so happened last night I had a dream about the young man and um the dream was a prophetic dream, not knowing that the Lord was going to take me and let me watch Chronicles and remind me of just how far emotionally I have come. And that, you know, if he gave me the drive, the tenacity, the zeal, the physical strength and the ability, April to June, April, May, June, in three months, 90 days, I was able to shed a few sizes and get there because it wasn't me. My sister and I, when we went to Destiny Fitness every day, we would walk and we would praise the Lord. We would exalt him. We would give him the glory and we would just shout. Um, I have these for snacks today. I have two of these, two sets of mandarin oranges. This is my lunch. I have a loaded baked potato lunch. It is 140 calories for this. And I may have oatmeal and um got my coffee and my coffee probably may be like 140 calories because I didn't quite go all the way with the gusto like my boo does and take away all my sugar because when I poured the creamer in there I was gonna go for the gusto and just do only creamer but when I poured the creamer in there my coffee was still kind of brown I said oh lord I don't think I can handle it today with no sugar. So I put only two teaspoons of sugar in there. Not two spoons, teaspoons. So it's not too bad. And I think two teaspoons of sugar is 35 calories. So that's 70. And then I put like 60 um, calories of French vanilla. And so um, the coffee, I think itself is like 115. So what? 60 and 70 is 130, so 145. So I was about right, five calories off. But anyway, I'm just taking both of you guys on with us. This is what I do on Chronicles to the people on the Ambassador's Hour. And Ambassador's Hour, we say our mantra, we say our daily confessions, and we're about to get into the motivation, no part of it. So this is, as you can look through the window, this was my walk this morning. And I was walking in this direction. I was just going up this hill. And I was just going. And I popped on the Chronicles for a second. And I made them laugh. And then I um, kept on going down the hill. And then a little boy ran past me. Then an old man came and walking by me. But you know what I said? Only you. That's the topic of this video today. Only you. When you're on your journey, 
you only only you got you have to turn the opposite direction if you have to walk backwards to see how far you come so you can put your affection and your focus only on god you tell god only you god for god i live and for god i die then he'll respond only you you don't have to worry about anyone else your only competition is you naked you came into this world and naked you shall return you have a mission you have a mandate you have a purpose on your life you have dreams you have goals and you have visions and you have to determine what quality and caliber of life you desire to live if you choose not to work out and if you choose to be lazy and if you choose to overindulge and if you choose not to plan and you choose failure then you shall eat reap the benefits of your actions you will eat the the um the seeds that you sow if you don't have anything to eat at harvest time because you were lazy and you didn't sow then it's only you isn't that something and this is a hard motivation but i want you to know that when you look at the man in the mirror and you look back if i have a little bit too much silver right here or too much liquid eyeliner or i might think my chin might be this only me beauty is in the eye of the beholder and when they created that proverb they said that it was designed so that um because beauty cannot be looked at objectively okay when you look at things objectively that means you don't have an opinion so when that means that it's impossible for an individual to look at another individual objectively without having an opinion or formulating a paradigm or idea concept or thought of how that other person looks well let me tell you you only you are the beholder when you stand in the mirror you're the only person beholding yourself and you have to get a mindset in the heart that i only you god and taking your opinion of me you said i'm fearfully and wonderfully made you said i'm the righteousness of god through christ jesus you said that everything that you made was good and you made me and i'm good i love myself like you love me god i'm fearfully and wonderfully made i'm your workmanship i'm crafted in your image and your likeness and i love me you have to love you even if nobody else don't love you even if nobody else don't celebrate you, even if you feel like you're walking in this journey all alone, only you. You're your own competition. When you cheat anyone, you cheat yourself. Isn't that something? So, let's give you a recap about the weekend. Friday, I did my nails. Saturday was supposed to be a brunch, but the Lord would not let me make brunch for anything in the whole wide world. I fasted. My sister fasted my friend fasted and the holy ghost met us when i say met us i mean met us is we waited around we talked we did our girl talk we just caught up and the whole time we were sitting there talking and doing our little girl talk and everything and i was just listening to what the spirit was saying to me and i was just hearing what does says the lord then my sister got off work and what did she do that for she walked in the house on ready she came in there she started praying honey demons were going right left up down they were fleeing honey i tell you minister renata prophetess renata c mcfadden showed up when she came in the kingdom of darkness had to flee i mean they were just like running scared they were just like oh my gosh they were just like quivering and oh i cannot explain to you the power of god came restoration came if you have never been under the anointing of god the weight of god the glory of god where you have shabbat to to hila barak all that stuff to your your voices hearts and all that the snot the cry the tears the yelling i even think i seen her dance she about did a cartwheel one time honey that lord god almighty showed up there were prophetic utterances that were released that day people got total transformation and i promise you i promise you there was a word from the lord i felt so liberated i felt so liberated and so empowered that i was even weak yesterday i was so weak i just laid in bed for a while i think i finally got up and started 
washing my hair and getting myself together and when I finally started you know getting into the swing of things it might have been like three o'clock yesterday for real I would not trade anything for the experience I had with God this weekend I had a real experience with God a real encounter with God like never before and it and it stirred me up and it encouraged me and it motivated me to know that I'm right where he wants me to be I'm not where I was when I started Chronicles of the Curvaceous. I'm not where I was when I started Ambassadors Hour six years ago. I'm not that broken woman that I was when I walked away from ministry. I'm not that broken girl who feels like she has to have a man and will accept any little bottom feeder that shows her some attention. I'm not that person that I used to be. And the tears that I cried now and the emotion that you hear in my voice is because God has kept me. God has kept me. Every time I dabble in the kingdom of darkness and every time I accepted a low down dirty joker who did not love me like Christ loved the church at any time, I didn't see my value and I didn't look in the mirror and behold the beauty that God gave me. I got junk. I got diseases. I got broken. I was mess over these past four years I call him my boo every day but I promise you I promise you I have been fighting for my place in God and fighting for my worth in my mind in my environment and so much more one day one day when I tell my testimony you'll see how you won't even know how I can laugh and how I can cut the fool and be the plus size queen and encourage people on the platform and do what thus says the Lord because I promise you, I promise you it has not been easy. It has not been easy to turn on a camera and tell you that it's going to be okay when some days I didn't know it was going to be okay. I didn't know how I can record workout videos and not even know if it's possible for me to lose weight but God shifted my paradigm and he reminded me that all things are possible to those who believe that with man this is impossible but with God all things are truly possible and now when I cry and when my, my eyes are welling with tears and when my voice is cracking and when I'm feeling the way that I'm feeling is because I'm encouraged. Isn't that something? I'm encouraged. I know that this is just the beginning. I look at um, the beginning I mean obese people workout that I have on the channel where I had the red um, bralette on. I couldn't even work out for I think I lasted 16 minutes. Isn't that something? Nowadays, it's nothing for me to do 20 minutes on the elliptical. I was doing two and three minutes on the elliptical then. I look back now. I was riding seven or eight miles on the bike then. And I can now. I don't mind riding the bike. I love the bike. That's my favorite piece of machinery in the gym. Treadmill. I can do my 35 minutes running and walking and all with no problem. My stamina has increased tremendously this morning I was acting up about my .96 of a mile getting back out there my back was hurt and this that or whatever but I could have gone my entire distance if I weren't trying to um, be mindful of time and I'm still late <laughs> but I tell you I had to go I had to go I know I was going to be present for time but it was like okay you've got to go got to do this because if you don't you said you were going to get out there and hit the streets you're going to get some miles in for um breast cancer awareness you've got six days left come on girl get up you got to do this you only you don't worry about what nobody else is doing don't worry about what anybody else is saying only you you're your own competitor you have to be your own motivator you have to remind yourself of the purpose you got to tell yourself why and as i was reading the bible this morning about five o'clock i was reading first peter chapter two 
and the Lord was just reminding me that we're stones. Isn't that something? I was like, whoa. We always think of Christ as the stone that the builder rejected. But he was saying, and even if you go to, to um, Revelation chapter 2, 8 through 10, the sufferings that we have gone endured, the poverty that we have endured, and all is for the righteousness sake of God. Isn't that something? It's so that he can build upon us so that we can get our robe and we can get our crown and we can be everything that God has called and predestined and ordained us to be the royal priesthood, the holy nation, the royal people, a peculiar people that's why you don't fit in, that's why you're different, that's why things don't always um, mesh well with you, that's why um, I'm not getting the followers or I'm not doing this because I'm my own peculiar person, God is doing a work in me that's for a remnant of people, a select people who want to go in there with God, who really want to, you know, feel the presence of God, a select, elect people who really don't want to take a pill or drink a shake or do whatever, they're willing to work out, to eat clean, to be mindful, count their calories, do what they have to do to get to the place they want to be, isn't that something? And will endure the um, haze on the camera because they know that it's a real person on the other side of this camera that is motivating them, that is encouraging them and to remind that you matter. Your life matters. You will and shall reap the benefits of your harvest. You will and shall achieve your, your fitness goals. You will and shall be the man or woman of God that God has predestined and ordained you to be before the foundation of the earth. God has called you out. You are his chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. That's why I have purple nails and purple shirt and purple lipstick and purple eyes because I know who I am and whom that I stand, whom empowers me to be. God has empowered me to be his ambassador, his royal priesthood. I'm his stone. We're building the, the temple of God and he's going to have something that's, you know, not going to just like, if you think about the little, um, story, the little parable of the three little pigs. I'm not going to build my house with sticks. I'm not going to build my house with sand, but I'm a sand. I'm going to build my house on the rock. The chief cornerstone, the one that the build, the stone that the builders rejected. He's going to be the chief cornerstone. Then I'm in his image and likeness. I'm a stone just beside him. And he shows the direction and the um, architectural structure of how the foundation should be. And then I'm going to come right in alignment with him. And I'm going to bring other people to line up with him as well. Other stones to build this temple. That is, we're um, a building not made by hand. Isn't that something? And we're going 